Great. Um, well, uh, welcome everyone. My name is Gustavo Bejarano. I am an associate professor in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. I joined the LMU uh, 10 years ago. This is gonna be my 10th year. Uh, and uh, in the room, we have the uh, program directors uh, of, uh, of the other uh, programs. I guess, uh, I guess we can go, uh, each one of us and introduce uh, ourselves. So perhaps you can let us know uh, your name, uh, let us know uh, your major and what program you are, uh, you're interested in. So uh, let me call people in the order that I see them on my uh, list of participants. So uh, Joe, do you wanna go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Professor Joe Reichenberger. I'm the uh, co-director, at least for this year anyway, uh, for the uh, civil engineering, water resources, and environmental engineering programs, and also the uh, environmental science programs. So if you have any questions on those, I'll be happy to answer those. Uh, Dr. Pal is uh, on sabbatical in Italy, and so it's probably three in the morning or something over there. He's asleep. <laughs> so that's why we're here. Uh, so Dr. Rula, I guess, right? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going, I'm going by, by, by the list on my screen. So that the, the next person is Emily. Hi, oh. everyone. Um, I'm Emily Agnello. I'm the graduate program recruiter for LMU. So I work with all graduate programs, um, but I do work a lot with Seaver. So um, I'm here to answer any application questions if you have any or questions down the line on how to apply. Uh, Armin? Hello. Uh, it's, uh, I recently got accepted into the civil engineering program, to the master's program. It's 3 a.m. in Lebanon, so I'm barely awake. Oh, okay. Well, we understand. <laughs> so thank you okay. for this event. Well, thank you for joining us. What program are you interested in? The civil engineering program with the water resources. We focus on water resources. Great. Um, okay, let me see who's next. Um, David Lopez. Hi, I'm David. Uh, I studied biology. Uh, I got my degree in 2014, so it's been a little while, but I'm interested in coming back to school and in, I'm looking at the master's in environmental science. Okay, Great. good. Uh, Nazma Ola. Hi. I am a, a professor of electrical and computer engineering, and also I'm the associate dean for the college. So I take care of all the graduate programs of the college, whether it's an MIT student or engineering or com environmental science, computer science, all of those. So specifically, you will see my name when you apply for graduate scholarships, assistantships and things like that, or you have any problem. So let's hope you don't have any problem. Okay, then you don't need to see me as much. Okay, and in general questions, university level, so you can ask me those. Uh, Selena Lopez. Hello, I, oh, sorry, my head fell. <laughs> I'm interested in the civil engineering program uh, yeah. Great, great. Um, uh, BJ, can you introduce yourself? Gladly. I'm uh, BJ Johnson. I'm a professor in the computer science department. Uh, I've been at LMU for quite a while. Uh, started out as an undergraduate and then at the graduate level. Uh, graduated in 2005 with my master's in computer science. Uh, came back in 2017 as a full-time clinical faculty uh, professor in the computer science department. And uh, as of uh, this coming fall, I will be the director of the master's program in computer science. So welcome to everyone. Hi, nice to see everybody. Thank you, BJ. Uh, Dan Bat. Hi, uh, I'm a senior chemistry major at LMU and I'm interested 
uh, and learning more about the environmental science uh, graduate program. That's great. Uh, thank you, Dan. Uh, Felix Abel. Hi, I'm a undergraduate senior at California State Los Angeles, and I'm interested in the electrical engineering program. Great, Felix. Um, Fr Francia Nogueira. Francia, can you hear me? Okay, well, I'll get back to Francia in a few minutes. Uh, Julie McNair. Okay, so I'm an educational consultant and I work with uh, graduate applicants, um, you know, applying to different uh, engineering programs, but also I work in other disciplines and I'm here to learn more about the program so I can promote it among the, the students I, I work with. Oh, that's great. Uh, that, that's great, Julie. Uh, welcome. W welcome to LMU. Um, uh, Mia Berg. Hi there. I'm Mia Berg. I'm currently an undergrad student. I'm a senior at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, and I'm interested in the master's in environmental science program, and I'm studying environmental management right now. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Siddharth Srin Srinivasan. Hi, I'm Siddharth. I'm currently a senior at uh, Drexel University, uh, and I'm interested in the computer science uh, degree for a uh, uh, master's. Great, great. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Srida. Um, let me see if I'm missing. Oh, uh, Lee Kebe uh, Kungen. Me. Um, I'm Lee. I graduated from University of Hawaii back in 2013, and I'm interested in the computer science program. Great, great. Um, Selena, did I call you already? No, I didn't, right? Yes. Oh, is it me? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes, I already went. Yes. I'm interested in oh, okay, the okay. engineering program. Good, good. Uh, I think I've talked to you, okay. haven't I, Selena? Right. Yes, yes, I've been emailing you. Right. I have a reply, yes. So I think I called everyone already. Am I missing anyone? Okay, well, uh, let me start. Dr. So, Saeed. Dr. Saeed. Oh, yes. I'm sorry, Omar. Um, oh, no problem. I came late. <laughs> uh, hi, my name is Omar Saeed, and I'm the uh, director of the graduate program of mechanical engineering. Is anybody interested in mechanical engineering? Well, I am, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, so, uh, well, uh, the, the agenda for today is to give you a presentation of uh, all programs of our college. That's going to be rather short, uh, and then we're going to spend time on each of our programs. So uh, let me get the presentation on the screen. Okay, so um, yeah, so these are all the graduate programs available in our college, electrical, mechanical systems engineering, civil engineering, computer science, healthcare systems engineering, teaching mathematics, and environmental science. Uh, the names that you see there are the uh, program directors, and those are the, uh, some of the people that you already met in this room. Um, so, uh, the goal of, of our program is to, is to provide opportunities for both working professionals and for students. So our program, our programs are, are directed to the patients. Um, therefore, our courses are in the evenings to allow working professionals attend our courses, uh, and, uh, and and uh, and we also have uh, full time students. Um, so. Um, We also have certificate programs available. So you, you can contact an MS program, and MS program is going to is going to take you 30 units to graduate. Um, if you are not sure about committing to 30 units uh, from the start, you can select a certificate program instead. That's a total of nine units. And uh, and if you decide to stay, then you can use those nine units 
and continue the, uh, the, the MS program. Uh, we have several certificate programs in, 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 in different areas. So if you're interested in, say, in electrical engineering or computer science, just feel free to ask and, and, and we'll, we'll let you know what options are available. Um, some of our uh, um, funding for students include uh, graduate research assistantships. Uh, these are limited and competitive. Basically, you're working for a, a faculty member uh, doing research in one of their labs. I think this is a good option for full-time students. So if you decide to be full-time, you can work during the day and then do your courses at night. There are also range research assistantships, uh, which are also uh, employment with a, uh, uh, with a faculty member. The appointment is usually somewhere from uh, five to 20 hours per week, depending on how much time you have available. Um, and, um, and you can also talk to individual faculty members to, uh, to see if they have extra funding uh, ex externally uh, funded. Um, okay, so all these are assist uh, assistantships. So assistantships means that you have to work uh, on campus and you're gonna have a time card and you, and you submit your work hours. Then uh, we also have scholarships. Scholarships are um, all need-based with the exception of two of them that, that, that I, I will explain later. So um, yeah, so we, we send an email to all students every semester telling them if you're interested to apply for a scholarship, if you are, you need to submit uh, your FAFSA. This is for um, uh, local students. On the other hand, if you are an international student, well, you don't have to submit FAFSA, you have to write, uh, you, you have to submit an application to our Dean's office. Um, we also have uh, teaching assistantships. These are part-time employment with the university. And in this case, you're going to be helping other faculty members with their courses. Some faculty members may ask you to do uh, grading. Some other faculty members may ask you to uh, help them with lab assignments uh, and, and so on. Um, if, uh, if, if, you, if you're interested in those opportunities, you can also contact our financial aid office. They will, you will find more information in their website. Um, there are several student organizations in our college. You can get involved with them to do extracurricular activities. Uh, so for example, we have uh, groups on uh, engineering for humanity, uh, the American Society for Civil Engineers, American Society of Mechanical Engineers, the IEEE for Electrical Engineers, uh, the Institute of for Healthcare Improvement, uh, and the International Council on Systems Engineering in COSI. Um, and we also have, uh, some of our programs have uh, an, a council for industrial partnerships. So um, I think the largest, of, uh, the largest group is from civil engineering. Uh, they invite um, uh, alumni from the program and other industry partners, and they have an event uh, every uh, every year uh, where they meet with students to do uh, uh, workshops for resumes and mock interviews. Um, however, there are uh, there are uh, services like this one for all programs. We have uh, uh, the Office for Career and Professional Development, and they all they provide this type of service also for for all programs. Um, so I was telling you that we have scholarships and, um, and that the scholarships are need-based. Well, we also have scholarships that are on, uh, on the basis of merit and uh, there are only two of them. So there's that graduate, uh, the outstanding graduating student. So the student with the highest GPA of each, with the highest GPA of each program is recognized uh, every year. And we also have an outstanding first year uh, student. Um, and that this is on the basis of GPA. Scholarships are all uh, um, applied to your tuition. Okay, so you're gonna re you're gonna receive a reduced tuition when you receive a scholarship. These are the different campus resources available to uh, all students. So uh, we have our office for international students and scholars. You will be in contact with them to take care of all of your visa related uh, needs. Um, and then we have the Academic Resource Center. 
uh, if you need help with, let's say, uh, writing or improving your grammar, some of uh, several of our programs are demanding on writing assignments. So uh, yeah, they, they, they are very good, uh, uh, good resource. We have disability support services, student psychological services, health services, our library, and we have uh, several places for worship, uh, including our campus ministry, the Muslim uh, student uh, uh, prayer room, and our chapel. Um, what happened? Okay, sorry. Uh, there's the career and professional development services. Uh, I already mentioned that one. They help you uh, find internships. They help you find employment. They help you get ready for interviews. They help you prepare your, uh, your resume. Uh, so yeah, you can contact them anytime and ask for appointments with them. There's a collaborative learning center. That's the picture that you're seeing uh, over here. That's a place where all students can meet and you can uh, exchange ideas with students of, of other majors. Uh, and there's a burn supervision center for uh, uh, for exercising. That's the picture that you're seeing over here. That's the pool. Um, yeah. So yeah, students have access to all of those services. This is a picture of uh, of our students graduating, I believe, two or three years ago. So uh, well, hopefully you uh, um, decide to join us and 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 we'll celebrate the graduation in a few years. So um, uh, that's all I have uh, for the general presentation. Um, so let's move on with the presentations of our particular programs. And uh, I'm gonna try to move faster so that we have time for Q&A at the end of our session. So let me uh, move to my other presentation. So this is a presentation for computer science and electrical uh, engineering. So um, the slide that you're looking at over here is for uh, uh, electrical engineering. So, uh, you, you're gonna need to complete 24 units, okay, of electrical engineering courses and six units of elective courses. Those six units may be outside electrical engineering. So for example, if you're interested in courses from mechanical engineering, you can, uh, you can take that many units. There are a number of required courses, okay? And there are a number of uh, elective courses, okay? Uh, on the elective courses, I want you to notice these two options. So you're going to select one of those two options. And this is also common for all, I would say, for almost all the programs. You can select either a capstone project or a thesis. Uh, a capstone project is going to be a one semester uh, uh, project. A thesis is going to take you two or three semesters. Uh, what we usually find is that working professionals select the capstone project and some of our full-time students, since they, since they have more time, they're willing to commit to, uh, to the thesis option. Um, so uh, as you can see, our courses are, uh, each course is going to have a number of units. And uh, so this is what you're seeing over here is a definition of a unit. So uh, a unit means that you're gonna need, you're gonna do three hours of work per week. That is one hour of lecture plus two hours of work independently, like homework assignments or lab assignments. Uh, so if you have a four unit course, that's a total of 12 hours per week, okay? Uh, some courses are four units, some other courses are three units. It depends on your program. Um, and here is a sample of elective courses for, uh, uh, for electrical engineering, okay? Uh, once you're admitted into a program, you're going to meet with your academic advisor. This is true for all students. So uh, you meet with your academic advisor and the, and the, the first uh, homework is to come up with your study plan. We wanna see what courses you're going to register every semester until you graduate. Things that, uh, some uh, aspects that you should consider when you're working on your study plan is your time availability. Remember the, the definition of unit, okay? So that gives you an idea of how much time you're gonna need per course. If you're a working professional, you should register one or two courses per semester, no more than two, that, 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 that will be too heavy. On the other hand, if, you, if you're a, uh, a full-time student, you may register more courses per semester, allowing you to complete the program faster. So the duration of our program, depending on how many units you register per, per, per semester, could be uh, 1.5 years, probably to three years for working professionals. Uh, these are the degree requirements for computer science. Uh, the number of units is the same, 30 units again, okay? Now, this is a three-unit program. So the courses are going to be each one of 
three units. Uh, and there are two courses that are required. Then there are a number of elective courses. And then students select one of those three options. Basically what students are selecting there are the, the two choices that I, that I let you know a moment ago. Capstone project or thesis, okay? Uh, and again, you're gonna have your academic advisor, you're gonna meet with this person to, uh, to figure out what courses you, you, you wanna register. What you see over here is a, uh, some sample courses uh, that are elective. Uh, this is a sample study plan, study plan for computer science. Okay, so uh, yeah, so in this case, the student begins with six units, then this is nine units, uh, nine and six again for a total of 30 units. Um, so uh, the graduate capstone project is the project-based terminal class. You're going to have a capstone advisor and then you're gonna work on a project that applies the skills and knowledge that you gained uh, in all of your courses. Uh, this is usually a course that you registered in your semester before you graduate. And then when you finish your project, you present the results of your project to faculty members of your program. Um, the other option is to do the master thesis. If you're gonna do a master thesis, we expect that you do an original contribution. That means that, uh, that, means that you're doing something new, that you're pushing the boundary of knowledge. Uh, and one way to demonstrate that is via publications. So uh, these are some of the uh, uh, journals and, and conferences where our students have published in the past. Uh, I wanted to give you a, an example of this uh, capstone project. Um, and uh, it was about um, uh, non-speech recognition for patients that have gone through a uh, stroke. Um, so yeah, the student was using quality sensor networks and machine learning to, to detect movements of, uh, of, uh, of the face and be able to tell what, what words the, uh, the, the, the patient was trying to, uh, to say. Um, yeah, so that's, that's, that's an example of, 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 of a project. Um, Okay, um, we have a dual MS and MBA degree. Uh, if you're interested in this program, feel free to contact any of us. We can give you more information. Just to give you a very short review of this is that the total number of units is doubled. Okay, so a regular MS program is 30 units. If you're going to do the dual degree, well, you're gonna do 60 units. Uh, you're gonna first complete units of the, of the MS program. Once you complete 12 units for, this is computer science and electrical engineering. I believe the other press might have a different number here. But okay, but once you complete 12 units of computer science or electrical engineering, then you can apply to the dual degree program, uh, allowing you to get both degrees, MS and BA, after you complete 60 units. Um, and uh, the, uh, the, the last slides that, that, that I wanna show are just pictures of some of the research activity that we do with students. Uh, electrical engineering and computer science work in very close relationship. We used to be in one single department in the past, but uh, we broke it into two because uh, we were getting too many students. Um, so um, yeah, so over here, you see faculty and students working on cognitive systems, bioinformatics, and game design, autonomous room systems, uh, ultra-fast imaging and remote sensing. That's our photonics lab. Uh, we also do work on wireless sensor networks and the internet of things, uh, deep learning and machine learning, uh, software-defined radio and CubeSats, uh, green energy, antenna design, uh, and uh, motion capture systems. And uh, well, uh, and let's take a look at the admission requirements. So, uh, all applicants have to submit what you see here at the bottom. Okay, so you need to submit, uh, you need to fill out your online application form. You have to pay a $50 application fee. Uh, you need to submit two official transcripts of all schools attended after high school. If you are an international student, you will need to uh, uh, include a transcript evaluation. The process to do that is in, it's in, it's in, our, in, in our website. All students have to submit a letter of intent that's uh, one or two pages explaining um, uh, why you want to uh, pursue this program and what your plans are after graduation. Uh, optional items include uh, letters of recommendation and, uh, and um, 
and your um, a GRE. If you don't have a degree in computer science and want to apply to the computer to the computer science program, let's say that you have a degree, I don't know, let's say in mechanical engineering, or you have a degree in um, you know, uh, economics, then uh, your 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 study plan will be added extra courses. Okay, some extra courses. Uh, same thing for electrical engineering. Okay, so let's say that you are uh, a mechanical engineer and you want to apply. Well, we're gonna uh, we're gonna make sure that you complete all of these courses. Of course, if you already if you already finished your calculus from your previous degree, we're, we're not gonna add those extra courses to your study plan. Um, so uh, yeah, be mindful that there are certificate programs. Uh, these are nine unit programs and you can finish them. And if you want, you can continue uh, in, in the MS program. So we have certificate programs in software architecture, and cybersecurity. Um, and uh, yeah, these are the opportunities for financial aid, which we, we already covered. So, um, and uh, the career and professional development uh, uh, office, um, they help our students find uh, employment. Uh, these are some of the companies where recent alumni have uh, find uh, employment. Um, and uh, this is Jessica, she's, she's really good uh, with students. Um, she, she will help you with your resume, she will help you find internships uh, and so on. Yeah, so th this is a very good resource. That's the reason I wanted to have one slide for them. And here's my contact information. If you have questions about uh, electrical engineering or computer science, feel free to uh, contact. Um, questions are uh, uh, for the end. So let me move on to my last uh, presentation, which is going to be on um, systems engineering. Give me one second, I'm having some technical difficulties. Okay, so systems engineering. I'm gonna try to keep this short. Um, so systems engineers. Uh, well, uh, systems engineers have to define uh, the customer needs. Uh, they have to specify this functionality of the system. And then they have to uh, go through a process of design and optimization and decision making to, uh, well, to design the system that satisfy those requirements. Um, and uh, the, the focus is on large systems. So we're not looking at, a, let's say, a single electronic component or a single uh, mechanical component. You're looking at the system as a whole. Okay, so how to optimize a large uh, system. Um, so um, the program has three cores. So uh, there's a systems engineering core. That's three courses. And then you have the engineering project management core. That's another three courses. Then you have a technical elective. The elective can be depending on your background. So for example, let's say that you come with a mechanical engineer, engineering degree. Well, if you want to continue working on mechanical engineering, well, you can do the technical electives in that, in that area. Uh, these are all the uh, areas of emphasis that, that are available, okay? So when you select your technical elective, you select one of those, okay? And that's three courses, in one of those areas, okay? So yeah, so we have cybersecurity, software architecture, aeronautics, and space systems, uh, and so on. Um, and then in the last semester, students have to complete a capstone project. Okay. Um, so, uh, okay, so I was telling you that there are three cores. Okay, so the systems engineering, project management, the technical emphasis. Each one of those is three courses. Okay, so one course is required. Okay, so this is a required course. And then you select two of out of the electives. On the project management course, one course is required. And then you select two courses from, uh, from the electives. And then uh, on the technical focus, then depending on what focus you select, you're gonna be given a, a number of courses. You have to complete three courses to satisfy this. And once you and 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 in the last sem, in the last semester, once you complete all that, you're gonna do the the custom project. Okay. Uh, so this is the, uh, this is a um, how the uh, curriculum of a student would look like. So each course is three units for a total of thirty units. That's ten courses, and you have three cores. Okay, so you have systems engineering, project management, and your technical technical emphasis. Uh, again, uh, there's a dual degree uh, for systems engineering and the MBA program. If you're interested in that, let me know. First, you have to complete 
12 units of systems engineering before you apply to the dual degree program. And of course, you have to be in good academic standing. You have to have a GPA of at least 3.0. Um, and again, we have certificate programs. Uh, those are three courses and you have, and we have certificate programs on systems engineering, pro program management, cybersecurity, uh, software architecture, and, um, and aeronautics and space uh, systems. Uh, this is a sample of courses being offered this semester. I just wanted to give you an idea of uh, the courses that you will be taking. So this semester, uh, students are completing systems engineering, project management, uh, agile development, uh, cyber defense, uh, engineering economics. One second, I missed it. Uh, spacecraft uh, communications, uh, resilient space systems. This is a new course, very, very exciting. Um, and uh, systems architecture and systems engineering modeling and analysis. So uh, yeah, so if you go to our bulletin, you will find a large list of courses. Be mindful that we do not offer all those courses in one semester. We just select a number of courses. And for systems engineering, for example, we offer this many courses in spring 2021. So uh, that's all I have. Uh, thank you for coming. And I'm gonna now hand it over to uh, Joe. So that he, so he can present uh, civil engineering and environmental science. Okay, thank you, Gustavo. Uh, let me uh, get my presentation up here. Okay. And uh, you're going to share, allow me to share my screen, I guess, right? Yes, you're sorry about that. Okay, that's no problem. I have it here and uh, we'll share it. And with this, uh, we should have everybody here. Uh, talk about. I'm going to go through this very briefly. We have a lot of students here, so we some have uh, questions that we'll uh, maybe address. Uh, we actually have uh, two programs, and uh, in the uh, civil engineering and environmental science department, one is results in an MS, your master's in engineering. Uh, the other is a master of science in environmental science. Uh, both programs are uh, 30 units. Within the uh, civil engineering program, we have uh, two options, a water resources concentration and environmental engineering concentrations. But students can select from their electives, and we'll go more through how the program is set up uh, from each concentration. So you can kind of wind up pretty easily with a blend or a hybrid which is kind of what I am, I, and what most agencies and most consultants, uh, when, you, when you're looking at a water resource person, those companies tend to do both uh, water and wastewater treatment, water quality studies, water resources. And so having a hybrid is, uh, is uh, quite useful, but you can focus or you can develop the hybrid. We have a, a thesis option, it's optional. Uh, we don't uh, have a capstone project. We do have a, a, a comprehensive oral exam uh, for those that don't uh, take the thesis option. Uh, you would sign up for the uh, comprehensive oral exam. Uh, and if you were doing the thesis option, you would sign up for a thesis defense. So we substitute the thesis defense for the uh, oral comprehensive exam. Uh, as with the other programs, as uh, uh, Gustavo has uh, discussed, we do have a dual degree program, MS in civil engineering and an MBA. <laughs> if you achieve both uh, 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 degrees uh, at graduation, you'll go up and get your degree twice, one for civil engineering and one for the MBA. Uh, 
quite an honor. And we do have uh, uh, a number of certificate programs. There are nine units each. Uh, again, if you're not real sure you want to commit to a master's program, uh, maybe you want to just uh, try it out, focus your, uh, your uh, education uh, and your experience, and then you can always transfer those uh, courses to your master's program. As we said, we uh, have the uh, various programs. Our admission requirements are that uh, you need to have a class in general chemistry. Doesn't need to have the lab, but at least you need to know something about general inorganic chemistry. If you've had organic chemistry too, you're gonna to be a leg up. It's not required, but certainly very beneficial environmental engineering and environmental science. We, we need to have mathematics through one year of college for the engineering degree. If you're going to convert your environmental science degree to an engineering degree, which about half of our students do, uh, then you're going to need uh, one year of uh, college calculus. But if you're gonna stay as an environmental scientist, one term of mathematics and in cal in calc is required. And then we would uh, require some life and physical sciences, again, totaling at least four college level courses, which could include biology, chemistry, environmental science, ecology, physics, et cetera. Our programs are set up that they have core classes, which are required classes. We have uh, a set of technical electives from which you can choose two or three or four. It varies a little bit with the program. And then we have global perspective electives, which uh, you will need one or two to, again, depending on the type of program. And depending on how you set your technical electives, and that's what I was saying, you can, you can work out a hybrid because you can take the core, for instance, environmental engineering or environmental science, and then take your technical electives in water resources, for example. And uh, uh, most of our programs can be completed in, uh, in one year. Uh, if you're not working full time, but generally most students take two years to complete, okay? Uh, we do have some independent studies as elective classes, whereas an in opportunity to investigate uh, a particular topic of interest, maybe something you're doing at work, typically a maximum of three units per course. And you're going to want to need to find a faculty member to help guide you through this. It's, it's, it's your program, but you will need some guidance and directions. We do uh, allow you to take courses in other programs as, as elective classes. Uh, we find, for instance, the, uh, uh, a lot of our students, the uh, project management class uh, is uh, very helpful to them and they take it. Uh, some take uh, some of the mechanical engineering classes that they might be interested in. But anyway, uh, to do it, it's a matter of working with the directors and uh, come to see uh, Dr. Powell or me uh, for your, uh, civil engineering program or environmental science program. And then uh, uh, we'll work uh, with the other director of the other program for you to uh, make sure that it's uh, okay. Generally, it's not a problem unless for some reason you don't have one of the uh, requirements for the course uh, with your background, but generally not a problem. The thesis option can count up to six units, uh, typically uh, two semesters, uh, fall and spring, and some students will usually include the summer semester. Uh, we don't like to have you start right away. We want to get to have you take at least a year's worth of courses uh, before you do your research. Uh, topics are identified by you, the student, or it could be a, a faculty member. Uh, and then you and the faculty member will work to form a committee. It's pretty true of all of the uh, thesis programs uh, or the thesis options in the other programs are pretty much the same. 
and, and this would replace up to two three unit elective classes. And so you'll still have to complete the course requirements and complete a total of 30 units, including the thesis. Unit. Sorry about the phone, but I got my home phone in here. Nobody's answering the phone. Uh, environmental science students can change to civil engineering prior to graduation by taking and passing the fundamentals of engineering exam, which is administered by the uh, NCWES. Uh, you meet the core and technical requirements and global perspectives for that particular focus. You have to be careful with that. Complete a college level calculus before graduation. And as I say, we get about half the students to do this. Uh, some of them have actually wound up and passed their uh, professional civil engineering exam. So uh, they can call themselves a, a professional engineer, which in civil engineering is quite important. Uh, and it does open up a much broader degree, career path for you if you're at all interested in it. But it's up to you. Why study at uh, LMU? Well, we have modern and professionally relevant courses that focus on sustainability and taught by both uh, uh, distinguished faculty in academia. And we have a number of uh, professionals from industry that come and teach some of the very specialized courses. They're offered in the evening. Uh, students are exposed to a balance of perhaps the latest advances and in innovations, both in practice and research. Our graduates are provided with enhanced career opportunities, shortened path into management and leadership positions, and increased salaries. We have small class sizes. It fosters a very collaborative community environment. That's what our students uh, say when they come here from larger schools as uh, undergrads. They come here and they find out how uh, collaborative, first of all, their, their other uh, colleagues are, but also the, uh, the faculty members. And so it becomes a really personalized experience. Our programs benefit, as they say, from a mix of professional scientists and engineers who are working and along with students performing research toward their master's thesis. And students have a flexibility to customize their study plan to meet their goals. So we're really flexible. If there's something you want to do, we'll work with you to try to see if we can achieve that. We have a number of testimonials. Uh, these are from some of our students that uh, have moved on. They've been been out of class now, look, 10, 11, nine years, 10 years. And so they're still very successful. Anyway, uh, I'm here to uh, answer any questions, but I think we'd like to move this on to uh, Dr. Sayed. You should be able to share the screen now, I think, uh, Dr. Sayed. Is it my turn? Uh, yes, I think so. OK. OK. Uh... So I'm just going to talk very quickly about the program of uh, the Masters in Mechanical Engineering. And uh, my name is Omar El Said. I'm a professor at the program and director of the graduate program. Uh, our program serves engineers seeking to advance their careers. So if you don't want to go for a PhD, but you are in one of the companies like Northrop or Boeing or uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, aerospace companies or one of the automotive companies, it's a good uh, thing that you uh, uh, take the masters with us. 
Our program is modern, professionally rigorous and convenient, where faculty members are up to date in their fields. And we have many uh, people coming from industry to teach specialized courses in their areas. Our program is flexible so that we can have people coming in, in the, after they finish working hours and uh, our courses are taught either six to nine or 6.30 to 9.30. Uh, we have some emphasis on industry relevance and uh, like uh, Professor Rackenbergen indicated, they have small class sizes which allow meaningful interactions. You can ask as many questions as, as you want in a class. And uh, our location is really an excellent location because it is very close to Silicon Beach and to companies in the aerospace and the uh, uh, Department of Defense Industries. Uh, admissions requirement, you need to have an undergraduate degree in mechanical engineering. If not, then you have to complete a set of courses in the undergraduate level, mechanics of materials, dynamics, thermodynamics, fluid mechanics, and heat transfer, so that you will not be in a disadvantage while you're taking courses with people who had a background in mechanical engineering. Uh, the program is uh, 10 courses, 30 semester hours. There is a, a math class, which is obligatory, but the other nine courses are optional. And uh, our courses are in the thermal sciences area and in the solid mechanics and materials area. And if you want, you can take one course outside the mechanical engineering area, like in systems engineering, uh, civil engineering, electrical engineering, it's up to you. And we encourage very much that you take a thesis because we have in our labs, for example, over 60 pieces of equipment. Our lab is really good enough for a PhD program. And uh, uh, one of the things we're uh, working on is hopefully in the future, we're going to start the PhD program. So our labs is really one of the things that we are very proud of. Uh, lastly, with this slide, we have uh, 500 and 600 level courses. We have to have at least four of the 600 and the rest as 500. If you take the thesis option, then two of the 600 levels are uh, already taken. Uh, there is a four plus one program, but this is for the undergraduates at LMU, so I'm not going to cover the slide. Our faculty members are specialized in many areas, in rapid prototyping, 3D printing, um, additive manufacturing, biomedical engineering and um, assistive uh, engineering, thermal systems, design and manufacturing, renewable energy, material science and engineering, dynamic systems and control. So we have a variety of areas that you can work in with the uh, specialized professors. Uh, you need to maintain a cumulative GPA of 3.0 for all coursework. And you cannot take more than four courses at any given semester. And uh, if you want to complete your thesis, you need to work with me or with any other uh, uh, director of the program who will come after me. Uh, like uh, Professor Gustavo indicated, there are merit and need-based assistantships available. So this is something which uh, after you enter the program, you can discuss. And uh, my name is Omar Es Saeed and my email is Omar Es Saeed at lmu.edu and my number is 310-338-2829. Thank you.
you, Omar. Um, that's, uh, I think that's all I have for presentations, right? Um, so I guess uh, uh, we'd like to uh, uh, answer your questions. Are there any questions? Uh, I had a question about the environmental science program. Yeah, sure, Dan. Yes. Um, I was curious about what um, students uh, have typically done after the program in terms of um, jobs and career opportunities. Uh, we have um, some st students right now, or I should say some graduates that are that are working for uh, one of the uh, NGOs, uh, Heal the Bay, and uh, some of them are uh, working for uh, other uh, agencies like that. Um, those that are making the switch from environmental science to civil engineering, they're working at a wide variety of consulting organizations and uh, agencies, et cetera. So, um, there are, as I say, job opportunities out there for environmental scientists. Uh, and, uh, you know, it just varies depending on the type of work you'd want to do. But uh, they have uh, jobs, obviously, for uh, uh, water quality, uh, working for uh, agencies, uh, um, doing uh, environmental impact environmental assessment work, things of that nature, uh, water quality studies, uh, permitting, things of that nature. Thank you. Okay. I've got a question also regarding the environmental science masters. Is okay. there an advantage or disadvantage for going either route with the thesis and the defense or the oral exam? Like, is there a benefit to do one over the other? Well, I would say this, that if, if your ultimate goal is to go on to, to get a PhD, and we've had a few do that, not many, but a few, then I would say the thesis option is something you probably want to do. Uh, if you're working full-time or even part-time, uh, Maybe you feel the, uh, the technical coursework might be better, particularly if you're working full-time, it's really tough sometimes to do a thesis. You just, you know, you're, you're so committed with work that, that you just don't have time to put in the, the time that it takes to do a thesis. And so that's gonna weigh into it too. So, so it's gonna be up to your decision. I mean, we've had some students that are actually fearful of the oral exam and they say, I'd like to do the thesis because I don't want to do the oral exam. Every one of them is regrets that decision because the thesis option is a lot of work. The oral exam is you make an appearance for an hour in front of the faculty. That's it. Got it. Thank you. <laughs> So don't fear the oral exam. <laughs> Any other questions? I have a question for the civil engineering or environmental engineering. If is the dual MBA um, the same as the other program where you do a year first? Yeah. Okay. That's kind of a uh, business school requirement, as I understand. Is that true, Dr. Ola? Yes. <clears throat> Normally, our dual degrees, you first finish the engineering degree, then go to start the MBA uh, courses. Generally, if you decide not to pursue the MBA after finishing the engineering, you can go and take your degree of engineering and leave, but then you cannot uh, come back again and say that I want to finish the du uh, dual degree. Then you have to restart the whole, whole MBA program. I see. Yeah, we have the to finish the, the whole degree. 
Yeah, go ahead, Celia. Uh, so you have to finish the whole degree, not one year? Yeah, that's actually, well, you would be finishing in one year. If you're a full-time one, you will be finishing in one year. So most of the course requirement, there are, by the way, here, here is the dual degrees advantage. There are common courses, means that there are six to uh, nine units that will dual count. That will count for both systems engineering or environmental science or something, and the MBA. So you don't have to take so many different. Actually, normally you would be taking 72 units if you are doing separately. Now, if you do the dual degree, you will be finishing it about 60, 62 units. I see. Okay. Both you save in time, money, and everything. I see. Any other questions? I have a, sm I have a small question uh, regarding the civil engineering program. So, uh, I have taken a course in hydrology so it is, I think it is equivalent of the surface water hydrology in the program. So can I transfer this course or take something? Uh, if it was at a graduate it? level, yes, possibly. Um, if it was okay. an undergraduate class, no. Oh, okay, okay, thank So you. is that hydrology course that you have taken? Is yes. it during your undergraduate degree? Yes, yes, during my undergrad. It Good. And is that course is used for an undergraduate degree? It is counted towards your undergraduate degree? Yes. Yes. No, then you cannot transfer it. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes we have students that have some extra classes that they don't need for an undergraduate degree. As Dr. Ulla was saying, in which case then that one of those classes, we can take up the two uh, classes could count depending on, you know, the, the subject matter and the, the grade you got in the class. But. Yeah, oh, okay. in general, we should understand that no one can count a course for towards two different degrees. Mm. That's the rule. Yes. A particular course can be counted towards a single degree, not two different degrees. That means that's for dual counting. But if you have already taken a hydrology course, and that course is equivalent to our hydrology course that is required, then you will be exempt from taking it again. In a study, you'll be taking something else. Yeah, that's yeah. a good point because, uh, you know, if you had it, uh, you could certainly petition for a waiver of that requirement. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, we have one minute left. Are there any other questions? Uh, hi, I just have a general question. Um, do you guys offer teaching assistance, assistantships? Uh, Siddharth, What's that again? Uh, the teaching assistant, TA. Yes and no, both. Okay, let me explain why yes, absolutely. For every, all undergraduate courses require some sort of TA or something like that. But uh, as we don't have that big a graduate program, so as you would be a graduate student, so not, not graduate TA, but undergraduate, yes, possible. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I'm but not that many, by the way. We don't, we don't need that many TAs, but always possible. I think Dr. Vierano have used graduate students for his course TAs, right, Gustavo? Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, uh, yes. Dan, you had a question? Yeah, I was just gonna ask about how uh, large the cohorts are for these programs. In, uh, in our three programs together, water resource, environmental engineering and environmental science, I think there's about 25 total students, maybe 30, something like that. So. Each cohort is probably collectively together about 10 students to 12, something like that. Yeah, it's 10 to 15 students for civil. Uh, electrical right now is even lower, 
mechanical is slightly bigger. So uh, generally our total number of students in each program is 25-ish, uh, except there are a couple programs, about 30. We don't have any graduate program which has 35 plus students, not a single one. So you'll in be in our classes a lot with uh, the same group of students, which really makes it uh, kind of nice because you you see the same people and you develop some really strong uh, relationships with them uh, that you know that carry on beyond graduation here, you know, working environments and things like that. So pretty nice. Yeah, Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm coming from the uh, chemistry program at LMU, and it's very, very similar. Like a lot of, a lot of seeing the same faces. Yeah, oh, is that is that, so. you have a degree? You have a chemistry degree from from LMU? Uh, after the semester, I will. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. So you know the system. Oh, nice. Good. Yeah. So you know it. So yeah. the main thing is Dan is that we try our best to be connected with the students. The main thing that our emphasis is building a community means that you need to know your classmates and you need to know the faculty members and the faculty also need to know the students because we strongly believe in this philosophy or building human connections so that you become a better engineer. That is very important for us, okay? Indeed. Alrighty, I want to thank everybody for coming. Uh, hopefully it was informative. Uh, again, if there's any questions about any of the programs, contact uh, either uh, uh, Dr. Gustavo or myself or Dr. S. Saeed, uh, and we'll be happy to uh, answer any of those questions. And we've got uh, uh, Mr. Johnson here also, so. Uh, he can answer some of the questions. <laughs> yes, absolutely. In fact, I'm, I'm going to put my email in the chat window so you guys can contact me if you if you have questions. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice rest of the evening and go to dinner or whatever you're going to do. It's opening up a little bit in LA, but it's still outdoor dinners. <laughs> right. So, Thank you, guys. Enjoy. Okay. Thank you, Thank you so for much. coming, everyone. Okay, bye. Thank Hope you. Hope to see you, you soon. Thank you very much. Have a good Thank day. Thank you. Have a good day. Take care. Right. Stay safe. <laughs>